All right, so let's go ahead. We should be logged in now. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Please let me know if you can hear me. All right, fantastic. Okay, looks like we are good to go. Hi, everybody. This is a uh, Party Bear Minis here for my uh, painting thing for CAVCON. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Um, <clears throat> I frequently describe myself as being a particularly intelligent gorilla with a wrench and um, these magical, magical electricity crackling over glass answering all of life's questions is still a mystery to me. So let's get painting. Um, my goal, it please by all means communicate through the chat. I got my window right in front of me. Um, over the course of today and Sunday, we are going to be uh, painting four different figures. Today, we have, excuse me, a dual cast Tuseki 2, which I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on, as well as a regent from The Rock. Now, my goal is four miniatures in my four hour time frame. Let's go ahead and adjust this down a little bit so you guys can see a bit better. My setup is very rudimentary. As I said, gorilla with a wrench. Yeah, not that close. So we are gonna go and start out with these two guys. Now, I have, as a painter, put most of my talent points into speed. So that is what we are going to be doing, trying to get all of these guys done in that time frame. So we're a little bit late, but let's see if we can go and still get this done. All right, so we have our painting supplies here. We have our giant cup of brushes. We have our miniatures. We have our paint. We have way more paint than we probably need, uh, primarily Reaper paints. Let's go ahead and move this back so my tripod isn't completely falling over. Um, I do most of my painting on a wet palette. I have my cu cup of water and a drink for myself. Yes, a good huntsman. It is a Tuseki 2. Not even a Tuseki 1. It is a Tuseki 2. So we are going to go and start out with our base coats. I received a list of the preferred paint schemes for these particular guys. So we're going to go ahead and begin with the um, Tuseki base coat as was requested with a uh, Reaper Pale Olive, and this is in one of the old, old bottles. Shows you exactly how long I've been doing this. Give it a good shake. And let's go ahead and get some on the wet palette. Now, I know my predecessor was using an airbrush. I actually generally don't airbrush. Um, mostly on account of the fact that I don't have one and I have not developed that particular skill. Um, I do tend to ramble a lot when I'm painting. I ramble a lot in general, but please, by all means, um, ask questions, talk, chat. I will talk about just about anything, especially this weekend that is CAV related. Um, Good Huntsman says, more paint than we need? How silly. Maybe more than we'll use, but never more than we need. Well, you know... I wish I could say you're wrong. <laughs> I really do. I mean, my uh, my fiance is a fine artist, so she has a habit of uh, sitting down next to me in her studio painting, which is absolutely lovely. Um, but being a fine artist, she does a lot more paint mixing than I do because uh, I learned on miniatures and I learned as a war gamer, so uh, I'm accustomed to having 11 billion different shades of paint to go ahead and... Uh, Get every color under the rainbow. And unfortunately, that's just kind of what I got you got used to. Now, this is a nicer brush. I'm not going to use this for the rest of this base coat because when you're using brush, if you are base coating and you are not using a great big honking brush, you are just wasting time. So, got a big old crappy brush. Get a little bit more water in it. Ah, there we go. That's the speed I want. So probably most of what I'm going to be talking about today is going to be how to move quickly and still maintain good results on account of the fact that's normally what I'm good at. So this is one of the steps that I do. I talk about it on my channel a lot. It is uh, the right tool for the right job. Uh, we are going to be doing a lot of edge highlighting. We'll be switching to the smaller pro appropriate brush for that. For this particular uh, step, when we're just doing this base coat of pale olive, 
just use the biggest brush you can get away with. So while I'm doing this, how are you guys enjoying CavCon? It's all, I've been watching on and off most of the day. It's been a ton of fun. Hope you guys are enjoying the virtual format. So let's get a little bit more pale olive. There we go. Really excited hearing uh, John and uh, Mr. Chris talking about the possibility of Cav role-playing game. I've been uh, kind of wanting something like that for a while. Yeah, Good Huntsman says prefer the I in real life format, and I can definitely side with you on that. But uh, if it was in real life, I probably wouldn't get to go because I don't really get the opportunity to travel all that much. And uh, even if Cab, even if CabCon is going to be with a uh, ReaperCon over in Texas, it's a little bit of a drive from sunny Orlando, Florida, where it is already hot. Which I'm happy about. It means I can actually hop in my pool. All right, so we're going to go and let this dry for a minute or two before we go ahead and apply a second coat. We'll go ahead and move on to... Sorry about that. I am getting a phone call that I am going to promptly ignore. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and move on to this regent. We are going to be painting as the 17th Legion Iron Horse. So we, for our base, we are primarily going to be doing Yellowed Bone, which we once again have from the Reaper. Let's shake it up real good. And then we're going to be doing a two-tone color. We're on the uh, limbs and the arms and the legs. On the limbs of the calf, we're going to be doing Schwarzenwald Gray, which I'm, assume, I'm assuming it would be Schwarzenwald, not Schwarzenwald. If you guys can tell the difference. Now, because we're going from such a stark dark to light, we are going to have to do two coats of this base coat, but... That's not a problem. So we're going to go ahead and oh, hit my head. All right, so let's go ahead and lighten this uh, paint with a little bit of water. Not too much water. It's probably too much. And uh, Oh, yeah, that's real thin. But it's going to get in there. Yeah, this is going to be a little bit of a pain for that to dry. But, okay, let's go ahead and get some of this water off. It's one of the downsides about moving fast. This kind of stuff happens. But I doubt that will stop us from not getting this done. So yeah, I will go ahead and say I love the ongoing theme of the streams of a uh, developing rock culture, whether people want us to or not. You know, the concept of rock food was mentioned earlier, and they're saying it's a, just going to be basic potato soup with no flavor. But I don't think that's, I don't know if that would be the case. I kind of like the idea of rock food being like super, super spicy. Like super spicy and very pungent, very bitter, very strong flavor. So you kind of have to fight your food. That seems like the type of thing that would be on brand for them. All right. So this is definitely going to take some time to dry. So a lot of times I know I'll go ahead and like wait for this stuff to dry. It's going to take two. So JS Twitch asks, what color scheme are you going for? Well, we are doing two different color schemes on these guys. The um, Tuseki is going with the 80th Legion, the Gunslingers, which is going to be a pale olive for the uh, baseline. And the uh, there's going to be an accent color of an amber gold and like a blonde hair highlight that's going to go above some of the top spots. The Regent is the... Um, the Iron Horse Legion, they're going to be primarily yellowed bone, um, lightening up to uh, the ivory type uh, highlights. And um, they're going to be a Schwarzenwald Gray, which is one of the uh, cab paints. It's kind of like a nice, deep, nice, uh, deep gray that I had a lot of fun painting on my test model. All right, this is dry enough. Uh, the Good Huntsman says, maybe it's still alive and you have to wrestle it onto your plate, kind of like Klingon Gok. 
where apparently Gok is best served still alive. Kind of like the idea of that. I mean, like I know the book doesn't list them as being purely carnivorous, but the uh, Ritter are. So I'd imagine they have some sort of vegetation that they have to eat too. I mean, having a society eating purely meat is a uh, very energy and labor intensive. But then again, I also know that the rock are only the warrior case and about a uh, 75% of them are not that case and are thus not privy to that kind of treatment. All right. So we are going to be good to go here. All right. So we are looking good on this Tuseki so far. Uh, we are going to have to let a little bit of stuff dry before we move on to our shading on it. So while we wait on that, I'm going to go ahead and hop into doing some of the more metal bits. Uh, we're going to take Reaper Blade Steel from the Bones line. Now, this is one of the big keys to um, painting quickly. And when I say quickly, I really mean efficiently. I'm not going to say uh, move the brush fast that you're in detail and whatnot. But we are going to go ahead and keep ourselves moving, and we are not going to uh, just sit down and wait for stuff to dry. So we are going to go ahead and take, uh, which brush are we going to use for this? Let's go ahead and use one of our, we're going to need a little bit of control, so we're going to use one of our nicer brushes. And this is when we're going to have to start paying attention to what we're doing. we got the blade steel. Let's go ahead and get these rotors. This is where my hand tremor starts coming into play. That's fourth why I did pour myself a drink, not as stiff as I normally do on my on my streams. This is a convention. I'm trying to be on my best behavior, although it is five o'clock here. All right, there we go. And anything else that we want to be a metal. So let's go ahead and get the inside of these jet engines here as well. All right. Try to keep this in frame and let's go ahead and scooch this back down a little bit more. There we go. That looks about more like where I normally have it. Like I said, I apologize for any amateurness. I'm still relatively new to the world of streaming, not painting, but definitely streaming. Um, we're going to go ahead and keep, uh, these missiles on the front. We're going to go ahead and paint them in more of a, uh, like a bright, bold contrasting color. So I'm probably going to make them like that nice red. Let's go ahead and get the inside of these rotors here. I think these are probably exhaust grates. And the dual cast is an absolute pleasure to paint. I wish I will. Oh my God, the detail on this stuff is incredible. My friends won't hear me stop shutting up about it. It is a, I still think that the dual cast is going to be a game changer. Now, ideally we would be going on both of the cat on well, both of the models and doing all the metal bits, but the uh, region here is gonna need a little bit more time to dry because I thinned down the uh, that ivory a little bit too much. Good Huntsman comments, the uh, gun barrel. Yep, uh, the gun barrel will absolutely be getting a nice little coat of this blade steel. Now, we are starting off with a very, very light color for this particular guy. So we're going to have to make sure that our uh, highlights are going to be going even lighter. And we'll go and get to that in a little bit. Let's go ahead and... Kadoom. Dave Ad, is this the Battletech stream? Kidding, kidding. Ha, 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 ha. Hey, I like Battletech too. I'm not going to go ahead and dump on it, but this is... No, this is Capcom. This is an actual realistic um, sci-fi universe. This is one where technology is readily available and they're still producing it. <laughs> so, the hobby habit. Pretty sure that the Rock Cookbook, 30 Flavors of Victory on the Battlefield, at least after the Calf Campaign book, that would... I, 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 I would be willing to do that. I, I, um, 
not necessarily something I talk about on the stream, but something of those who know me. Uh, I am Mr. Food around here. I am. Uh, I will eat just about anything. And I do enjoy my Epicurean delights when it comes to food. All right, let's go ahead and move on to um, some shading on this because we got a nice good base coat. Um, this is where I'm going to be a bad boy and I'm going to go ahead and uh, step away from the Reaper. Uh, yes, I am very much a foodie. I am a professional. I like to call myself a professional fat guy. Um, so we're going to move on to a little bit of Games Workshop paint, and I do apologize for using it, but unfortunately, <coughs> Reaper does not make an equivalent, so I kind of have to use this. Laser Cooked Terrain. That definitely is something that The Rock would probably enjoy dining on. We're going to go and take some Agrax Earthshade, and this is when we're going to go ahead and start. Now... <coughs> I do things a little bit differently when I wind up coming to a lot of my um, shading. Um, because of the nature of the shading that we're doing, I'm going to need a bit of a finer brush. And this is where we're going to use longer things like script liners and liners. Now, this is not going to be an all-over shade like I will typically do for my, um, for, uh, my, for my real speed stuff. If I did an all-over shade on this guy, it would just look muddy as muddy can be. Really light colors, you want to avoid that. So we're going to go and take the script liner, which I like the script liner because it's fine, but it's got a really big belly, so it can hold a whole lot of paint. And we're going to go and just put a tiny bit of the shade into every single crack and crevice along this model. Go a little bit over. It's not a problem. But this is, it's very similar to panel lining. This is a recess shading, panel lining, whatever you want to call it. There's a bunch of different names for it. Um, but the point is right now we're going to go and just bring out these details and we're going to go ahead and actually, no, no, we can't do that yet. I'm getting ahead of myself. I missed a step because we're going to be using the same shade for the accents and we're going to go and hop onto amber gold. Amber gold is what we're going to be doing for the uh, accents. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's get the amber gold. Still want to have it with a uh, decently, not decently fine brush. And that's one of the things I am a uh, the poster child for adult attention deficit. So if I wind up missing any steps, I do apologize. It's not just me. Well, it is me. It's my brain. My weird, weird, crazy brain. So, all right. Man, this guy is going to turn out real light. So, Dave, uh, did John leave us in here unsupervised? I don't know. He might have. He might have. I normally require supervision. Now, we're not going to be doing anything particularly crazy in here. What are you talking about? Don't, Dave, don't, uh, don't apologize for getting out of hand. It's CavCon. It's time to party. It's time to go ahead and enjoy yourself a six-pack of Drake beer. We've got to worry about Cav Boss. Work about the Mercenary Bonding Authority. The Templar's Third Corp you got to worry about. That is getting a little bit thick. Let's thin that down. Oh, by all, but by all means, get out of hand. Talk in the chat. It's much, much easier to uh, keep this going if I got someone to talk to. Ask questions. Do crazy stuff. You can go ahead and uh, criticize me like so many people do for not having an airbrush. At this point, I realistically should have one. I have a compressor that I got a hold of, but I got to get the airbrush itself. I do that with my next batch. Of get that with my next batch of commissions. Gimli says he doesn't have an airbrush either. He so you're fine. Yeah, it's a. It would help me out with a uh, commissions though. Whenever I'm doing a any sort of a professional level work, uh, so this is just supposed to be according to this uh, goes on the tops of upper body parts. So, the Tuseki is largely upper body parts. So we're going to take a little bit of creative liberty um, as I'm continuously hitting onto my light and making it vibrate because my camera's mounted to it. And I'm sorry, guys. 
Once again, I am real professional on this. So we're going to go ahead and apply this as accent. Couple different spots in here, but only along the top, as has been requested. I think that is probably about good as far as the amount of that uh, amber gold. Let's go ahead and neaten this up a little bit on a couple spots here that I'm seeing looking at it from the front. Let's just make sure that the paint isn't too thick. Alright, so there we go. So how is our regent looking? It's mostly dried. Stuff's kind of collecting in the crevices. I don't like that one bit, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, just give us give ourselves a new dollop. Yeah, Dave says he, he bought one last year, but he's still learning. Uh, there is a learning curve. There is, there is. I've used an airbrush before, but I can't say that I know how to. Um, I can't say that I'm gonna be particularly good at it, but I've got plenty of backlog of stuff to just practice with. So, all right, big old crappy brush. Uh, do put more paint on 20 minutes. I can slap in an hour. <laughs> Needs an airbrush, right? Hey, uh, look, I know a lot of times that like when I do the speed painting, it's half of the time. The speed is just me deciding that I'm not going to mess around and just put paint on. And if it winds up being wrong, I'll fix it. Um, I have found that a lot of times uh, gamers, war gamers, will get a little bit of analysis paralysis with how to move forward on stuff. And with painting, this is a this is such an instinctive thing. You just got to you just got to go and do it. There we go. I don't want to have this be too, too thick because this is one of the models with the lesser detail on it. And that needs to be a little bit thinner. That's better. So Dave asks, if these are for my personal army. These are not. Um, these are not for me personally. No, these are actually, um, Cav Boss sent me a couple models to paint. Um, so I am painting them for him according to his specifications. Uh, my personal ones are currently all the Malvernus stuff, which I do have a couple of my pile of shame of the backlog that I didn't finish up before CavCon. Uh, but I got real close. The only thing I had left from that backlog is a a pair of whites. Um, and, uh, after that, all I, uh, of course I put in my, uh, Capcom order. And now, uh, by the time that's done, I will have four of everything for Malvernus. We're going to go and hop onto the Regent and we're going to do the Schwarzenwald gray. We're going to do more than that. Okay. So this, we're going to have to kind of do a little bit of a tube. Ooh, I missed a spot. Ha-ha! Ha-ha! Yeah, I love painting for my personal army, but I'm also getting a little bit tired of the purple. Also, I'm a little bit nervous that uh, Thunderhead Studios is streaming after me because I kind of... I kind I'm told by other people that it's not stealing and I'm just heavily inspired by him, but I did go ahead and steal the color scheme from my Malvernus from some of his stuff. He does it way better than I do, but I did in fact do that. So Thunderhead Studios, if you are paying attention, thank you very much for the idea. You're a gentleman and a scholar. And you're a perfect example of showing how even a simple paint scheme can wind up looking very, very striking if you do it properly. All right, we got another flat brush. Let's paint these limbs. We got the Schwarzenwald gray. And this guy is going to have a whole lot more of the metallic parts, but we're actually not going to get that those yet. Dave says you got a oh, the uh, those uh, those pink camo Malverns are you? They look good. They look good. It is not the type of thing that you would expect, and I absolutely adore when people do things that are unexpected. I mean, I am all about people learning every single technique that they that it, that people do when it comes to miniatures painting. I think it's a great way to build skill, build technique, but do not be afraid to go outside the box. I love seeing variant stuff and color schemes you wouldn't normally see. 
I love seeing pinks and purples and more vibrant colors that you don't normally see because so much red and blue is out there. Oh, no, yours are pink and yellow. Oh, wow, those have to look. That's got to be a striking, striking color scheme. You should go ahead and submit some to the uh, Talon Gallery for Capcom. Like, I know I got to get some photos of my Malverns up. So people can do as I do, not as I say. And we are going to go ahead and paint some happy little robot limbs. Now, you're happy with your mostly blue Templars, and at least you have some gray, orange, and red. So, well, look, there, there, there is absolutely nothing wrong with having blue. I mean, I'm not going to say it's bad. I'm just going to say there's a lot of it out there, and that's not through any fault of anybody in the CAV community. It just happens to be that um, one particularly large company decided to name their poster child after a color and then try to copyright it. And it happened to be a blue. Working on a bright scorpion green Malvern Force, too. That's got to look good. You definitely got to post that in the group once it uh, pops up. I think just everybody should post everything in the group. I love seeing people's paints games. It's actually one of the reasons why uh, COVID's got me so down. I like painting in the game store so I can just sit there and watch people and give tips and get tips and all that kind of stuff about painting. It's just like getting people in the hobby. <laughs> you're going to put yours in, but you just attacked me with the red and blue. Do you feel attacked? I will attack you personally. Is that the rock that I keep seeing in Discord? Because if it is, you might appreciate being attacked. I don't know what you're like. I don't know you like that. Uh, JS Twitch asks me, do you like making fantastic looking bases or do you make bases like Cav Boss? Um, I am, I, 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 I'm, I am a proponent of basing. Um, I'm a proponent of basing and let me tell you why I 100% understand Cav boss's view on bases. And I have absolutely, I don't find fault in his argument. I, however, tend to paint for more of a display. Like obviously I'm painting, um, this, but I also tend to paint for, um, I paint army games and having a basing is a really, really good way to, uh, draw them together. And when you're sitting there having uh, 300 goblins on the table, having uh, them all have the same the same type of base in order to just draw them together, it, 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 it helps out a lot. Um, also, I find that if I'm painting an individual figure for like an RPG, it helps to kind of frame the figure. It also provides a contrast because I will normally do uh, basing with a very different level of a tone, tonality than the rest of the mini. Like if it's a very light mini... I'll paint the base very dark, but dark light. If it's very warm, I'll paint the base cool, that kind of stuff. Um, winds up creating a lot more contrast. It just makes things pop. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and hop into the shading that I uh, was neglecting, that I was trying to do earlier, and I was jumping the gun on. So back to Citadel Agrax Earthshade. It is unfortunate that I do wish Reaper would provide um, something along those lines. Um because I would use it in a heartbeat, but at the moment I just can't find anything in the industry that's quite like it. So let's go back to our script liner and let's go ahead and start with our recess shading. Now with this, it is very important. It's best practice to be systematic. Wow, that is way too much. So let's go ahead and absorb some of that. Right, we've got a spot we're gonna have to go back over. Now, fortunately, I'm on this Tuseki. One of the nice things that I found when I'm painting um, calves that I do really like is that a lot of times the um, recess, if I'm doing recess shading instead of an all over shade or panel or panel lining or edge highlighting or anything like that, I can go ahead and hold a miniature and paint everything in one direction in one go. Like if you look right now, I'm basically painting all of the sections that are like vertical facing, going down these wings. Now another one of the nice things that you can do when it comes to uh, doing this recess shade if you have a couple of those lines like you do on these airplane wings, 
um, if you're using a script liner, you can just put the brush down instead of necessarily doing standard brush mo motion. And as long as you uh, are careful, you'll get the paint in and it won't overdo it. Now I have decided to do a brown shade on this instead of like a olive or a green to go ahead and just kind of like bring out the uh, details a little bit more. When you're doing something this light, details have a habit of just getting eaten up. So we're going to also highlight it becomes a little bit tricky because you can't go much higher. It's kind of like when I uh, tell people or if I uh, teach a painting class or something like that, uh, white is a little bit tricky because you can't go higher. You can't go brighter than white. So the key to painting white is to never actually use white except on the very, very highest highlight you could possibly do. Then you can use a pure white. Key to using uh, black is the same way. The key to painting black is just not use black at all. You can use uh, dark grays, very dark blues, off blacks, which do exist. Um, but I recommend to never actually use a pure black paint. As I proceed to use a pure black paint to go ahead and finish off around a base rimming. Yeah, I do rim bases with black. I know that's another thing that I've had people criticize me for, but they're my minis, so I'll paint them how I want. That's another thing. Always paint your minis how you want. Don't let anybody tell you it's wrong. This stuff is art. <clears throat> is the brush a one or a zero? This one? This is a 10 zero. This is a 10 zero script liner. So that means that it is um, a few sizes below a zero. So I believe that this would be the equivalent of like a size like quadruple zeros, I think. I could be wrong. All right, we're stopping being systematic with this. Let's go ahead and go back to being systematic so we don't forget, so we don't miss stuff. Now, the nice thing about this dual cast is that all of these crevices and nooks and crannies are taking the wash like wonderful. Um, if you, by the way, if you do have these wash, you may notice I had a spill. Put a little bit of tape underneath your wash. You can go ahead and save you from having to buy another pot or another bottle. It'd be great if they just came in dropper bottles, so you just put them on my palette. And then it wouldn't be a problem at all. Yeah, a lot of times if I'm painting calves, I'll go ahead and like paint on one side, do all the vertical lines, do all the horizontal lines, rotate at 90 degrees, do all the vertical lines, all the horizontal lines. Time we got 554. Man, that's losing that 20 minutes initially really hurt from technical difficulties. Hopefully uh, my Sunday stream won't, ha won't have the same trouble. Let's get a little bit more. Now we are doing these as a little bit more of a pronounced <coughs> detailing. Um, not necessarily like a comic book style, but we are going to be using some of those uh, concepts and techniques for this guy, just because the uh, coloration is so light and it's easy to just wash out detail. We don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. The model is absolutely beautiful. So we are going to make sure that it is done properly. So basically the way that we're going to be painting this guy, <clears throat> there are two particularly tedious steps, and this is one of them. Um, <clears throat> uh, if you are doing one that's darker, like once we move into the, uh, what is the other two that I'm doing? The uh, Conqueror and the Tyrant. We're probably going to be using a different technique, and I'm going to be doing a little bit of a kind of like a, not a time-saving hack, but something that's going to go ahead and save a bit of time. It's 
you don't notice it as much with darker colors, but you can do an all over wash and then a dry brush and then an edge highlight like a panel line. And you can get away with doing that. You guys have been kind of quiet. You, uh, Pretty sure I didn't insult anybody's mother. Also, please let me know if I cut out or if the audio gets bad. Yeah, sorry I'm in and out of stream. The day not super chatty. You're doing fine. It's looking great. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it will be looking great. It'll look great when it's done. Well, it'll look okay when it's done. This is once again still a relatively speedy technique, but. Well, fantastic. Thanks, Dave. Just be uh, fascinated by how quickly I line. And this is somebody who has a very, very bad nervous tremor in his hands, by the way. Um, one of the reasons why I started painting like I did was because it uh, kind of like as a stubborn, oh, yeah, I bet I can do this type deal. And I'll go ahead and let you know that part of the reason why I'm moving as quickly as I am is um, the right tool for the right job. Um, a lot of times, uh, you'll get people who, uh, well, a lot of times <clears throat> people want to, uh, preserve their brushes and you should, you should absolutely take care of your brushes. Um, but unless you're using the really, really nice ones, uh, brushes for the most part are pretty cheap. And, um, these like right this, like this brush right here. Um, I think I got this thing for like two, $3 out of Michael's or Hobby Lobby. I might've not even done that. My, uh, Fiance used to work for a fine arts manufacturer, so I we used to get a lot of free stuff, and this might be that. But this is a pretty cheap brush; you can get it for a couple bucks. Um, and for the specific purpose of doing the lining like this, it just speeds things up so quickly. Um, and it's worth it's it, it's worth that couple extra dollars to go ahead and do this, even if you do have to replace it periodically because the wash does d does junk up the brushes. Um, Washes will cause, just because they're so thin, they will collect in the ferrule of the brush. And most of the times when a brush goes, that's the problem. This paint collects in the ferrule, which is this area right down here, which it causes things to fork. That is, there are things you can do to help prevent that. The brush soap is really, really good for you if you don't have any master's brush soap. Seriously, get some. Um, but part of it is just making sure you're not getting uh, paint in the ferrule to begin with. And because washes and shades are so thin they just naturally flow into the into the ferrule all right so let's take a look at this guy i think the fuselage is mostly good let's go ahead and get these missile pods Now, another one of the reasons why I'm able to move quickly is because I've learned when you can be neat and when you can get away with being sloppy. Like um, this lining, I know it's another thing where there's a temptation to be super, super neat on it, and you do want to be neat to a point. But especially if you're going to go and do this next step that I'm going to do, the edge highlighting, that will cover up a lot of sins. Hey, Tiger Wraith, how you doing, buddy? Yeah, 
Yeah, Cab Boss went ahead and invited me to uh, stream about a month ago, and I uh, I was about as, about as pleased as pop. I, I had been so excited to do this and be able to go ahead and share this with you guys and be able to sit down and do this. Especially being able to do stuff for a game where the minis are so amazing. Because these things are things of beauty, especially the, the farther they get, the better they look. This dual cast stuff is amazing. I love all the little detail crevices that get put in here. It's cut nice and deep. Now let's go ahead and get some of that off. All right. All right, so we are basically panel lined on the back, which is the most important one because that's part that's the part that you're actually going to see. Um, I will periodically clean my brushes out just to rinse them to keep uh, too much paint from collecting. And we're now in the six o'clock hour, so technically speaking, my time is halfway done, but I had that delay, so. Let's go ahead and be a good artist and not leave my brushes in the water because it's a bad thing to do. All right, oh, let's have another sip of my drink. And let's Okay, so one of the nice things is about uh, another thing when it winds up coming to uh, things you can do quickly versus things you shouldn't. Um, I'm not saying be lazy, but underneath stuff, like the bottom side of an aircraft, people aren't going to see it as much. It's like painting the inside of a tank. Like, you can do it, but you really don't need to have as high of a standard when you do it. Okay, these little guys right here that are uh, kind of just poking up, we're going to basically just paint this like figure eights, and we're going to go ahead and make sure, like, we're not going to bother not getting the wash on top of it, because that's going to get completely covered when we, when we neaten up in a little bit. We got these bombs, which are going to be a completely different color, but I'm still going to go ahead and line along there like that. What color should the bombs be? I don't know. What color do you guys think? What color should, what color should these bombs be? That's what color the bomb was in Dr. Strangelove, but I know that answer was black and white. These things aren't exactly nuclear weapons. I think they're just standard pylon stuff. Thunderhawk Studio says blue, the color of peace. You know, I might go ahead and do that. Something bright and contrasting the rest. I'm thinking about doing the missile heads red. By the way, Thunderhead Studios, thank you very much for letting me, uh, even though you didn't know anything about it, uh, letting me steal the uh, lightning pattern on those battle mechs you did. I did those on my Malvernus at a uh, much, much lower standard than you. But thanks, I guess. <laughs> Jeff asks, so if you were doing a dark aircraft, say like a forest green, would you edge or panel in a really light color or like a yellow to a lighter green? Well, that depends on a few things. Um, if I'm doing something in a really, really dark color, like a forest green or a hunter green or like a coal black or something like that um i will so it's a good idea to if you are learning highlighting go ahead and crank up your highlights by a step or two more than you think you should um because more contrast will draw the eye and is usually better um depending on the look i'm going for if i'm going for something that like really wants to stick out i have done a very very deep forest green with like a bright 
neon green, like a, a Reaper, like slime green or toxic ooze type highlight. Oh, the guy's slipping. Um, and that winds up having a very stark effect, but it does look really, really cool. Um, the other thing that I have done, if you want to go ahead and make it almost look like the edges are glowing, um, you can actually do a progressive stage of the lining of the edge highlighting, um, which can have a cool effect too. Um, but I've also done it where it'll go more to like a mid-tone green if I want it to be a little bit more understated. So I know it's, 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 it's such a non-answer to your question, but it depends. Um, I do typically try to keep um, highlighting into the same color. So I will not frequently do like do panel lining on a green with a yellow. I don't typically do that unless the situation really, really calls for it. So. These are another ones where I'm not worried about getting the shade on the actual thing because a quick stroke of the brush will resolve that. Okay. Okay. Just says makes sense. Thanks. No, it's a, yeah, you're very welcome. I mean, it's a, a risk of talking about other games. If you take a look at a uh, Warhammer stuff, the, a lot of the, uh, Necrons and Dark Eldar have that kind of look to them. So if you want them to look like that, you can do that. Um, I have considered painting a uh, cav or two in a really, really dark color, like a very, very deep purple or a black, and then um, doing the edge highlighting with a, like a very, very bright white to make the whole thing just look like a wireframe model. Um, I thought that might be a cool idea to do. Maybe it's just like a one-off. If you really want to have fun, go ahead and use one of those like Vanta black type, super, super black paints where it's uh, so dark that you can't even see the uh, texture on something. But then you wind up running into the problem of like, how do you paint the edges when you can't see them? I think that is probably pretty close to done on that step. All right. So let's go ahead and um, shading like that, panel lining that normally dries really fast. Um, so you normally don't have to let spend time drying, but I'm still going to. I'm still going to, just in case. And we're going to go pop into our black shade. Here we're going to go and pop this up over our metals. And actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and once again, not do what I said I was going to do. Um, let's go ahead and do kind of the, some of the metal bits on this guy right here. Do the really big metal bits, like his guns. I like I, I like painting guns metal. I mean, I understand that like in the world of cab, probably most of the stuff isn't actually metal anymore. Most of it's in um the territory being more ceramic or other sort of super awesome high tech space age materials. Um, but there's still something about painting stuff metal. Uh, lime green sounds cool. The lime green is actually really, like, I've had some really, really cool stuff doing that. I know I did a set of like alien temple bases like that, where there were just like a really, really deep, dark, like hunter green, almost black. And then lining up progressive layers of neon. So everything just had this kind of like almost alien look to it. It was, it, it, it was really cool. It's a fun little technique to do. And we missed a spot. We missed a spot. Let's get that spot before we move on. There we go. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to this black wash. We're going to go and put the black wash over the metallic parts on our two Seki. So let's, uh, and we're just going to put it all over. Be generous with this because, uh, especially if we're doing this over such a light base coat, um, it's very, very likely that, uh, some of it was some of the light base coat will show through. So we want to make sure that it, uh, covers and gives us all the depth that we need. We'll be doing other stuff, and it'll be it'll have plenty of time to dry. Uh, 
It looks like there's like a rotary cannon or something other up front. Let's go and flip this bad boy. And get the bottom side of these rotors. There we go. Yeah, I've been so cav mad lately. I've just gotten half finished cav projects all over my painting desk. Somewhere around here, I've got this. Uh, you know, there he is. Something I want to something I want to kind of showcase on my stream while this dries. It's a just a bright, bright yellow rhino. I had the idea of after a there's a picture in the rule book of a, a yellow jackets rhino. It's got kind of way the cutaway thing. And I thought that would be a cool mercenary company to do. And then I realized that I wrote myself into painting yellow again. All right, let's go ahead and uh, fill in a, a couple details. Let's go ahead and do, let's go ahead and start in on the cockpit. Um, cockpit, we're gonna go and start out with a dark elf shadow. Now I'm using dark elf shadow instead of a black because once again, you don't wanna use pure black because then you can't go any darker than that. some like little vent covers on these rotors. No, all right, there we go. Uh, snap back to reality. All right, so we're going to go ahead and um, thin this one down a little bit more than we normally would. Now, I'm using Dark Elf Shadow because Dark Elf Shadow is technically not black. It is a purple. But we'll still cover nicely. It's only a little bit because it's nice and thin. Settle into all the recesses of the cockpit. And this is another one where you're, it's going to get over stuff. And that's one of the reasons why we want to go and get this done now. So we can neaten up better. And the fact that it's nice and thin means we're going to go and get a little bit of the transparency for free. There we go. All right, so while we're doing the cockpit, let's go ahead and hop onto this guy too. So now that we got that done, I'm going to need a new piece of parchment paper on my wet palette because this one is getting really, really crinkly, which happens, especially if you don't change it out before your you paint. All right, so now we are going to go ahead and start with the fun part. We're going to go and do a little bit of the actual edge highlighting that I was talking about. Um, I am going to give the Dark Elf Shadow some time to dry, and I'm going to go ahead and move on to the um, that kind of khaki color, this amber gold. Now, this is not in the Reaper Triad, but I want to go a little bit lighter than that. So we're actually moving over to Reaper Blonde Highlight. Uh, once again, I do like my highlights to be rather stark. Um, part of that's a stylistic choice. Part of it is just a, um, I feel it looks better. So we're going to give it a good shake. And now you guys are going to see the secret to doing this quickly as well. First off, you want to make sure that your paint is nice and thin. Second off, this right here is a Tenno short liner. It has a very fine point. It is not a script liner, so it doesn't have that really, really big belly, but it's still a larger belly than you'll get on a Tenno spotter or a Tenno round. So it can still hold a lot of paint, and the long shape of it makes for very, very straight lines. So. This is when we actually need to be very, very careful. So this is when I will start slowing myself down a bit. All 
and being as steady as I can possibly be. Which unfortunately for me is only so steady. There you go. Now, the advantage to doing edge highlighting like this is it will cover up, ooh, that's way too much. If you ever get like a little glob of paint on there, you have too much paint in your brush. It's still too much. So the advantage to doing this after you do that uh, recess shading is it'll automatically go over a lot of your mistakes on the recess shading and you're neatening up while you're highlighting. Uh, JS Twitch asks, what camera are you using? Honestly, I don't know. It is a, uh, I got a basic um, streaming HD camera when I started streaming. Um, I should probably upgrade. I don't remember what it's actually called. I just know the sound when it hits my head. Now for this step, you want your highlights to be very fine. You want those lines to be very fine. And if you need to go back and touch up, you are always capable of doing so. I can feel my hands getting shaky. This part right here, if you, <coughs> excuse me, this part right here, if you have not set yourself up a wet palette, this is a really good time to have one because it will help keep your edge highlight paints really, really thin. And you want them to be thin for what you're doing, for, for what I'm doing with this. Uh, so Jeff asks, so the highlight paint, you put a few drops in a wet palette and you're dipping your brush in the wet palette. Yes, yes, it's off camera and that's probably a bad, that is a, that's bad streamer. Um, let's go ahead and move it over like this. So wet palette, by the way, you know, a sponge, parchment paper, and a piece of Tupperware will do the job. And I am constantly dipping it in my water pot as well, just to go and keep it nice and thin. Thunderheads, the Thunderhead Studio says, how dare you, sir? I know, I'm such a bad streamer. It's like, bad llama. Um, Now let's go ahead and do just some really, really fine lines along here. I have a hard time even seeing those. Yeah, Thunderhead Studio says he's thought about put some thought into setting up a palette camera just because people are always asking about it. They are, and um, that's the problem. Is like I all like I know the palette is such an important tool with how you do things and you're mixing your paint. Um, 
but it just always seems so boring to me. Like I never even think about it. It's like, oh yeah, there's the palette. That's just kind of what you do. But I understand that it's a skill that you have to develop and you know, until you do, it's just not where it is. Cameras are hard to find these days though. That's right now. Everything's hard to find. If you think cameras are hard to find, go ahead and try to get yourself an appliance. Those things are back ordered to back ordered for days or weeks or years or whatever time increment you choose to have. Uh, And now I'm just blocking with my hands. I'm doing this to go ahead and try to be as stable as I possibly can. I do need to remember to uh, remind, keep reminding myself that I stream slower than I normally paint. Uh. Yeah, so uh, Thunderhead Studios, for those on YouTube uh, or watching without the chat, says that he doesn't want to see what other people to see what absolute chaos is on his palette. It's like, that is... I'd rather you not see what utter chaos is at my station. <laughs> uh, creative chaos is a thing, and this is definitely art. Okay, well, I think we're good on that step. So we're gonna go ahead and move over into our uh, pale olive. Now the pale olive is gonna be a little bit trickier because pale olive is the top end of that triad. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and do a test. Yeah, the Good Huntsman says, but watching the quote-unquote pros wade through the utter chaos helps the rest of us peasants fi figure out how to get past our screw-ups. Hey, listen, if you watch my stream, you'll find that I invoke Bob Ross in every single stream I possibly can. And Bob Ross would say there are no mistakes, only happy little accidents. So they're not screw-ups, they are potential for art. All right, so let's go ahead and... Now, this may be a little bit too light for me with the Undead Flesh, which is, by the way, what this is. So I may have to tone it down a little bit with the Pale Olive, but we'll find out. All right. Keep bonking my head. Okay. So we're going to go and... Because we're testing this out, we're going to go and take a look at it on the bottom here. All right. I think that's probably looking just a little bit too light. So we're going to go ahead and... Yep, that's right, Krugerman. We're going to paint some happy little rivets. All right, this is the point where it actually does make sense for you to see the chaos that's happening on the palette. We have Pale Olive, we have Undead Flesh, and we're going to go and mix these up. Didn't really watch Bob Ross growing up. Yeah, you watch his stuff as an adult, though. That's good. He is... I love Bob Ross. He was in the military like I was. He's from. He's actually from the area that I'm from, which is crazy. Guy was raised in Daytona Beach, and I live about 30 minutes away from there. Um, he had a fascinating life, a little bit of it that we know, but he is a... Uh, yeah. We're going to paint some happy little rockets to splat the not-so-happy little rocks. They do stream this. I didn't know they streamed this stuff on Twitch. I know it's all on YouTube. Okay, so we've toned this down a little bit. Ah, there you go. That's perfect. So we're basically doing a 50-50 mix then of Undead Flesh and Pale Olive to go ahead and do this edge highlight. And this, especially when you're mixing, because mixing tends to spread the paint out. Uh, what part of Florida? I'm from Orlando. So I'm from dead center of the state with tourists and Disney and terrible, terrible traffic. But I love it here. Love you, you. It would take a crane to get me out of Orlando. Okay, there we go. Ah, you're born in St. Mary's, Georgia. 
I've got a family up in Georgia, quite a bit of it. Uh, here we go. Uh, Right, a tool for the right job makes all the difference. Which, by the way, if you guys want to do freehand and you need to do like checker patterns or dags or flames or lightning bolts or anything like this, short liners and script liners are the way to go. Um, it still amazes me how so many people who are getting into miniatures painting um, don't really know the different brush shapes and brush sizes. And I think that's partially because um, most companies that manufacture this stuff, they like uh, keeping their names proprietary. Which is why they would get like a regiment brush. Mists the start. What color was the base aircraft? The base aircraft was uh, right up here, Reaper Pale Olive in one of the very, very old uh, bottles. Very welcome. Please feel free to ask any questions. Um, I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to get these guys done on this stream, um, just because I am moving a lot slower than I normally do because I'm yakking my gob, but it's a lot more fun that way. And I can go ahead and explain to you guys what I'm doing. That's another technique you can do if you're doing this edge highlighting. If you are um, doing like a really, really sharp edge, like a right angle, if you, you can actually just go ahead and take the edge of your brush and run along just like tagging and letting the edge of the brush do the work. And you'll get a nice, really fine line that way. This has been very informative and super helpful. Thanks, thanks. I am... Look, it's I I love painting. I love art. I love the art behind it. I love the science of uh, the science behind different types of paint. I love the mechanics of it, but the thing I love the most is seeing other people learn. It's seeing other people get into it. I'm kind of a little bit of a teacher by nature, and I love the idea of other people learning and getting excited about this and sharing this marvelous hobby and art form that we all love so much and getting other people to realize how amazing it is. It is relaxing. It's therapeutic. I remember my life and my mental health got much, much better when I basically quit playing video games and just focused entirely on tabletop. Thunderhead Studio says that he likes uh, crushing the pain, the hopes and dreams of newbies. It wasn't supposed to say type that. No, you're not supposed to type that even though you do because you're so good. And that right there is actually another lesson where um, that you can do when it winds up coming to learning how to paint and, and getting better. <clears throat> yeah, the good husband says, and that it is an art form. That is a very important thing to do. This is art. Like you are, you're you're painting. This is art. Don't think of it as other things. I mean, would you believe me if I told you I've actually gotten miniatures into like art galleries for stuff? Like there was a couple of years ago, uh, their uh, local art gallery, um, Orlando City Arts Factory, was a uh, God bless America. I keep hitting my head. They were doing a like a Halloween Dia de los Muertos event, and um, I thought, you know, why not? My fiance was uh, putting some of her like super spooky goth paintings in, so I went ahead and submitted a couple of my particularly spooky monsters, and they got in. <laughs> uh, you can't stand the artists. Yeah, it's a uh, it's snobbery. That's really what I can't what I don't like. Anything can be art, and if you think for one second that painting miniatures is not art, you got a thing coming to you. But that is a, a little bit of a block that I know a lot of people 
a lot of us get with the idea of wondering whether or not what we're doing this is art. And my, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, my lady love has done wonders to help me uh, get over that particular hump. Because she is an absolutely amazing artist. And whenever I hear her talk about my stuff being art, it always gives me a warm fuzzy because she knows what she's talking about. Because it would not be a Party Bear Studio stream if I did not invoke Bob Ross and I did not brag about my lady love. So it's, he is a, this guy's coming together. Guy or guys. I don't, I remember. Do Tusekis have a Wizzo? I don't think they do. I don't think many vehicles have Wizzos. to do i need to get a better mount for my camera and now it's just on this ring light we have all right we need to clean out our brush it's getting clogged up yep so <clears throat> if you would like more informative painting and me explaining how i do what i do and what i'm doing um, I believe I am in the slot right after Sunday kickoff. Where I'm going to go ahead and try, and hopefully not having the technical difficulties, try to get the uh, last two dudes painted. The uh, I don't remember what they are off the top of my head. They're rock calves, so they're uh, named after like tyrants and despots and monarchs and that kind of stuff. Now, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it on this stream just because of time stuff. But the other thing you can do, if you are edge highlighting, I'll probably go back and revise this guy because it is for a... These are for uh, John, and they are for Cab Boss, so I want to make sure that they're looking chef's kiss. Oh my god, I just imagined the whole like a rock. <laughs> I'm as strong as I could be, like a rock. Anyway, one of the things you can do is um, you can actually even go a step lighter from whatever your edge highlight is and just start touching up corners or long edges like near the, uh, like closer to uh, where they would like meet. And if you do that, <clears throat> it'll just wind up uh, giving a little bit more to the uh, edge highlighting that I'm doing right now. And I'll probably do that for the final product on this guy. Also feeling another problem that I tend to have. 
It's unfortunate because I haven't I ate a lunch, but I have not eaten a full dinner, but my hands are getting a little bit shaky, and that makes this edge highlighting uh, tricky to say the least. You do need to have as steady hands as possible, and I uh, will normally pour myself a little bit something, something a little bit stronger than what I'm comfortable drinking on a uh, CavCon uh, stream because I need to be on my best behavior. There may be children. Good point, though. What do you guys think rock music would be like? And don't say rock and roll. That's already, that's a way too easy. Guar, yes. I, I, yeah, they would probably appreciate ridiculous metal. Ramstein, mm hmm. I can see that. Ugh. All right, we are going to go ahead and do something else with the cockpit. Um, where do we have? We did a Dark Elf Shadow. <clears throat> we are going to go ahead and step that up. Now, this is another section where I'm going to go and show you guys palette magic. I'm going to go and put a glob of the Dark Elf Shadow, and then I'm going to go and take a very, very light off-white bleached linen. Guar, Ramstein, Guttural, Throat Singing, and Prodigy, because they are the fire starter. Those all sound very, very appropriate. Those all sound strangely appropriate for rock music. All right, so let's go ahead and... We are going to mix these, and we're going to go ahead and... Um, the thing we want here is this transitionary area. Palette magic. We don't want too much water, but we do want it to be a little bit. There we go. All right, so what I've just done here is I've basically created effectively five different tones. We got the pure um, Dark Elf Shadow that's on Dark Elf Shadow that's on there. We have a light, a slightly lighter, a mid-tone, a very much lighter, and then a pure and like a pure bleach linen. So this is an area where this is going to be a little bit fun. Because this cockpit is so small, I can't use that brush. I, I still need to go back and use the very, very fine one. That'll, that'll work for mixing. So we are going to go ahead and start lightening up this cockpit just a tiny, tiny bit. And we're going to leave Areas of it still with just that dark elf shadow. Okay, and then we're going to immediately go to the next tone up. We're not even we're not going to clean our brush. We're not going to completely rinse it out. None of that. We, in fact, we are going to keep doing this even while stuff is wet. because I was going to do this cockpit in a slightly different color. But then I heard Cav Boss himself comment earlier that he likes the idea of the darker cockpits. So, and guess what? If these miniatures are for him, then that's what he's going to get. All right, now we've got much, much lighter. All right, and now let's clean up the brush for the pure bleach linen, and we are going to need to... Man, that dried up quick. One of the problems you can wind up running into with white paint is because the uh, paint pigment molecule for white is so big compared to other color paints that it has a habit of clumping up. But we are going to go and take that bleach linen, and we're just going to do tiny, tiny dots. Mm. 
All right. And that is how we do a simple, quick, dirty, but very good looking cockpit. Let's go ahead and clean this, uh, clean some of these up a little bit. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, keep the paint real thin, keep our brush point real, t real, real fine. We don't want it quite that big of a white dot, so we're going to go and just clean that up a tiny, tiny bit. There we go. That's good. All right, so let's go ahead and do our final panel lining on the bottom here. And then he is going to be pretty close to done. Oh, you know what? Considering the time, I don't think I'm going to be able to get this guy done. I think um, my 20-minute um, time frame kind of killed me on that. So I am going to go ahead and take this um, panel lining edge highlighting on this, on this guy to the next level on the stream. Just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. And I will go ahead and post um, a couple of pictures of this guy on his flight stand to the uh, Discord and to the uh, Cab HQ group, just so you can see. So I uh, can actually proper photography lighting. Instead of this super, super bright light I used to paint, because typically when, you, uh, when you're painting, you want to light it up and you want the more light, the better. Trying to keep it family friendly and not be. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so uh, Jeff uh, asks, what color was the original primer? Uh, black. I prime pretty much everything black. Um, coating something at the same time. All right. Uh, I missed a spot. Let's go ahead and fix that now. Um, I, pr I prime almost everything black. Um, And I do that for a couple reasons. Um, one of the reasons is because even though some colors will have difficulty going over black, um, and you can use either a colored primer or gray or white, um, black will give you deep shadows no matter what. And my style does tend to have... Um, What's it called? Um, my style does tend to have deeper shadows than most. Um, the other reason I do that is because the pigment molecule for black primer is extremely small. And I live in one of the most humid environments in the country. Um, it's not the type of thing you think is a problem until you have miniatures get completely screwed up by humidity particles getting trapped in primer while you're priming a miniature and then having them look dusty. And white tends to do that all the time. Gray tend to, tends to do it from time to time. I've never had that happen with black. What's a reason to use white? Uh, white is really, really good to use if you are doing, um, primarily if you're glazing. If you're uh, doing a paint with um watercolor techniques and you're glazing down instead of layering up, white is a good color to use for that because it uh, provides a better base for you to see the uh, glazing layers and the watercolor layers. Um, that's what the uh, Games Workshop contrast paints are all about, is basically they're a well-formulated line of glazes. <clears throat> that's the main reason why you would want to use white. You can do some stuff with white that you can't do with black, um, but from a personal standpoint, <clears throat> I just had it mess up too many times. Just wind up coming on way too thick. Okay, let's go ahead and neaten up around the cockpit. All 
All right, so we are going to go ahead and I am going to go ahead and just spend my last uh, 15 minutes here um, <clears throat> just uh, lightening up these highlights. Let's go ahead and uh, we got the blade steel. We already did that. Bad streamer. Uh, we're going to do some shiny mithril and let's uh, <clears throat> brighten up some of these. Metal parts. Oh man, that is a really, really bright paint. Might have made a mistake. All right, so we're going to go ahead now. No, I don't think so. I think that's just making it st stand out. <sighs> That last is actually really cool with the metallic. Yeah, it actually looks really good. Um, and that's <clears throat> that's a Reaper Shining Mithril. Um, I like using true metallics. Uh, let's go ahead and do these uh, missiles and bombs. I had them recommended. Um, yeah, a little does go a long way. Let's go ahead and do them the color of war. I have uh, just happened to have around here Ashen Blue. Um, I use I use Ashen Blue for a lot of cockpits because I like having them look blue. So let's go ahead and do these things the color of war. I wonder why blue is the color of war. I don't know where that even comes from. Ah, Braveheart. I should know that. God, I feel like a really bad nerd for not knowing that. It says, you're not William Wallace, eh? The real William Wallace is here who just consumed the English with lightning bolts from his eyes and fireballs from his eyes. Movie last left a long and lasting legacy in my mind, and it takes up permanent pl a permanent spot in my headspace. The joys of being raised in the nineties. They say you've absolutely no idea if that's true. It's just the first thing coming. Well, you know what? It works. It's gonna. That's that. That. That's what we're gonna do. That's where we live now. This is our life. It's our life, it's now or never. And I want to paint forever. That's not true, I do want to paint forever. All right, so we're going to go ahead, and we can't just leave this like this, like it is. So, um... And so, go ahead and do a little bit of a detailing on these uh, bombs. Let's go and put some stripes on them. We've already got this nice dark elf skin. It's the thing where to like adding just a tiny little bit of extra detail goes a really long way. Okay, well, we are going to have to let that completely dry. I'm going to apply a wash to that and probably call that a day. Um, but let's go ahead and get a little bit more of the undead flesh. Where did I put you? There you are. Let's put them a little bit more of the undead flesh in this um, pale olive mix that we have. And let's go ahead and uh, brighten up couple of these highlights for the last couple minutes. Okay, so 
So this is how you do it when you really want to go ahead and bring the panel lining up uh, just to kind of like to the next level. Ooh, I even just missed a spot with a normal panel lining. Let's take, let's fix that now. Oh my God, I'm mixing, I'm an entire wing. What am I doing? What am I doing with my life? Okay, so let's take this much, much lighter. Let's go ahead and keep it nice and thin. We're just going to go ahead and kind of ease up on what will be the highest areas of the highlights. So we're just going to basically like apply a very, very faint couple lines and dots. Good husband, also from the 90s, Maximum Decius Meridius. Father to a murdered son, husband to a murdered wife, and I'll have my my vengeance in this life or the next. He's also making movies, making songs, and fighting around the world. God, I remember when Russell Crowe was like the next biggest thing. So when you're doing this step where you're... Uh, just kind of like bringing out another layer of highlights. This is when the, th uh, the concept less is more comes into play. You do not want to overdo this. This is just going to be the absolute highest levels of the highlights. Give just a little bit more depth. Okay, so let's go ahead and drop a little bit of shade on these guys. Um, as much as I do enjoy Games Workshop Shades, the blue one is very, very strong. So I have one here that's a 50-50 mix of their medium. So it is a little bit more toned down. Uh, we need a deep... All of my brushes suck. Okay, here, this one will do. Be a little bit careful with this one because we don't want to get too much on the green. All right. So I think I really just got one more thing I want to do on this guy. I'm going to jump straight back to the pale olive. I've got a couple spots that I'm seeing that I want to touch up. Um, just was a little bit too overzealous with the wash, so we want to go ahead and uh, just get that stuff so it's looking good. But besides that, we've got about five minutes left in the stream uh, for my day, for my time. And then uh, Thunderhead Studios will be picking up the slack. So if you guys have any, th any, any final questions, comments, wild conjecture, insults to my mother, now would be the time. Um... Otherwise, I will see everybody again on Sunday, and I'm looking forward to it. Let's go ahead and get a closer look here. Got some cockpit work. We got some nice lining, some edge highlighting. My mother was, in fact, a hamster, but she was a lovely hamster, and everyone loved her. <clears throat> so for those of you who have who are not aware this is the uh, Tuseki 2 it's a Terran uh, fighter bomber and it is one of the first dual cast models and the dual cast is a game changer it is incredible it's the first time I've had the opportunity to really really dive into one and it is fan I, I love this this is great all right guys uh, four minutes remaining. Um, yeah, let's, uh,
So uh, Jay Switch enjoyed watching me paint. Very light tones. Looks really good. Thanks. We're going to be um, – Sunday is going to be darker. Um, so you're going to see a couple different techniques. I'm, I'm, really, I'm really happy with how that cockpit turned out. Cool. All right. Well, I do believe now I have to raid into Thunderhead Studios if he is ready. Um, let me go ahead and get my mouse working again properly because apparently this one likes to turn off. All right. Well, I hope everybody enjoys the remainder of CavCon. I know I have had an absolute blast. It's still just the first day. <clears throat> and uh, Hobby Habit, very welcome. Thank you for joining in. I know uh, participation is a big deal for all this stuff, and we love having you guys here. So we will uh, be right back in Thunderhead. Um, You'll be launching just a few. I'll go ahead and turn off my microphone, my camera, and I will raid in. Have fun, guys. <laughs> 